Уважаемые дамы и господа, лица компании Алекс, мы рады вас приветствовать на этом достаточно уникальном мероприятии. Сегодня мы фактически первая европейская премьера посетителя Name State, которую нам проведут наши партнеры с компанией Name, разработчик этого уникального усилителя Стивен Силс. Стивен. И директор по продажам компании Name. Дуглас. Давайте поприветствуем. Также мы будем демонстрировать данный усилитель на колонках Dina Audio Evidence Platinum. Так, потом нам проведут презентацию по этим колонкам. Колонк Хонкман из компании Dina Audio. начать наше предприятие. Теперь мы готовы снять чехлы с этих вещей. Все, за меня? Да? Окей? Hi everyone, good afternoon. Thanks very much for coming. This is our uh, launch of the statement amplifier in mainland Europe. And I'm very fortunate to have the designer here, Stephen Sells, who you've just been introduced to. And after I speak, Stephen's going to talk to you about the technical challenges that he faced actually designing and bringing this product to market. But first of all, apologies for the noisy air conditioning, but we've just got to live with that. So before we start to talk about statement, I just want to talk to you a little bit about Name Audio as a company. Last year we celebrated our 40th birthday, so we've been 40 years, this is our 41st year in the audio industry. And amplification has always been at the heart of Name Audio's core competencies. So how the business started just over 40 years ago was one guy's passion for music, and that man was uh, Julian Verica. What he used to do, he used to go around lots of bars, pubs and clubs and record live music. And he became very frustrated that when he played back the recordings, he really couldn't understand the music that he was listening to. Someone recommended to him that he should buy a particular amplifier, something that was available at that time. So he bought this particular amplifier and yes, it did sound a bit louder, things did sound a bit more controlled, but it, it didn't make it sound as intelligible as he would like. So Julian was a bit of an engineer. He used to race minis. He was a champion mini racing driver. So he was a mechanical engineer. And because he was a mechanical engineer, he felt comfortable teaching himself about electronics. So he decided to make his own amplifier. And when he made his own amplifier, other people got to hear it. And they said, can you build me one too? And really, that's, that's how our business started. So, one man's passion for music led to a company manufacturing products. And because you like music, we do these things. And following in that tradition, today we have a record label. We also do the in-car entertainment systems for Bentley Motors, but by far, the biggest, the biggest part of our business is audio. You're, you're here today, and this is a celebration, again, of our core competencies in amplification. We do many, many things. We do things from you know, network players, all-in-one players, loudspeakers, CD players, but amplification has always really been at our hearts. And when you uh, design and manufacture something that is quite expensive, and we understand that it does cost a lot of money, then, you know, sometimes people say, well, this is not for me. But it's not about us trying to say to you, you must buy this. This is a celebration and we want to share it with you. We want to share it with as many people as possible so that you can understand what we are capable of as a company because we do all these other things too. But this is statement here. And in a minute, I'm going to hand over to the, the chief designer, Steve Sells. But just before I do that, statement, was actually conceived 10 years ago. 
And 10 years for a manufacturing company to bring something to market is a ridiculous amount of time. Because when Steve came to the company, he said that he always wanted to build something extraordinary. He said, but there's two problems. The first problem was that it was going to be expensive. And as a company, we said, okay. And he said, but the second problem's the biggest problem. And we said, what's that problem? And he said, well, the bits that I want to use don't exist yet. So you can imagine the challenges, the challenges that Steve and his team faced actually to bring this to this state that it's in right now, a marketable proposition. So what we had to do was to talk to some suppliers and we had to get them to buy into the statement dream. So we went to some suppliers and we said to them, you know, you make things like this, but we'd quite like you to make them like that. And they said, well, if we make them like that, which is a really good idea, and we've never done them before like that, how many do you want to buy? Well, in fact, they said, how many thousands do you want to buy? I don't want to buy any thousands, I only want to buy six. That's the type of problem that we face. So we had to get the manufacturers to say, you know, I want to be, I want to be involved in something extraordinary. And we, we managed to secure, I think, some, some really good backing from suppliers some really good interest from suppliers, and actually a willingness to, to actually belong to the project. So I'm going to let Steve talk you through all the challenges that him and his team face, and he's going to talk to you about some really neat things. Statement's all about new thinking. It was a, it was a blank sheet of paper project, and everything, including the statement, is all new. The one thing is that other people make good hi-fi, we just do it differently. Thank you. Designing a statement was very special and we wanted to start at the beginning. We had no preconceptions and we had to free our minds and uh, look back at what other scientists have done in the past. Statement was, uh, we looked at people like Faraday and Lenz and we had to set our goals of what we wanted to achieve. It's, we have to be very strict when we decided what to do, we wanted to um, make this five times more powerful, have twice the dynamic room of what we've done before. It's, to make an amplifier powerful, it can make it slow. As a result, this, uh, it took from 2002 for the beginning, and by 2007, we knew what shape it was. In 2010, uh, that is when all the hard work started and we started the prototypes. Over here is our first, first uh, prototypes. So here you can see the uh, electronics. Designing an amplifier is not just about designing good circuits. Inside an amplifier there's circuits interact with other circuits. So the, the design is very three-dimensional. To make the power, you have to have a, a big heatsink. It didn't matter how efficient this amplifier was. It, it didn't matter what size it was, how heavy it was, or what it weighed. It was all about the good sound. So we knew we needed a, a big heatsink, and heatsinks work better vertically. We wanted um, the power supply inside, and, and slowly, these ideas come together and make a shape. Four years ago, we had this shape with two boxes. Inside this box is a, a 4000 VA transformer. Inside this box is one of those. The heat comes up here. This is cooler and this is warmer. This is the same temperature. And this is why the transistors are horizontal. So we have power supplies and output stage. We wanted it um, to be as pure as a pre-amplifier. So the front, there's no feedback overall. The voltage amplifier and the current, current amplifier are separated. The voltage amplifier is at the top of the amplifier, so it's uh, far from the power supply. The power comes up and the signal comes down and the signal comes out. So this way we control the magnetic field. Uh, the result is a very pure amplifier. It's 99.999% pure. And the power is 746 watts, which is one horsepower. This, this means we need to design new transistors. We went to a company that makes parts for space. 
They had uh, new materials we hadn't used in audio engineering before. This allowed us to get heat out of the transistor faster than we'd ever done before. We can use less transistors and make a faster amplifier. Instead of matching transistors, we take each transistor from the silicon next to each other when it is made and we put the silicon on copper and then aluminium nitride and we can uh, model this on the computer and it works good on the computer model too. Also here we use um, an error cancellation circuit and this is uh, like positive feedback. I'll tell you a little bit about the preamplifier. Listening to a preamplifier always sounds better with one source connected. Unused inputs are uh, disconnected from the product, so it always sounds like one, one source. Next, we wanted to build a very accurate and pure volume control. So we, we wanted to use a, a switched resistor volume control. The sound quality is good, but it sounds bad when you change volume. So we have two volume controls. When I touch the control in one thousandth of a second, it'll swap over to another volume control. This volume control has got zero crossing detection, so it's very smooth as we change. And then when I stop changing the volume, it goes over to the ladder volume control. Inside, all the circuit boards are mounted on springs and weights. I think um, these are some of the, the details that have gone into it, but there's also a lot of parts that don't get spoken about. We tested the relays for the volume controls 2.3 million times. We've tested turning it on and off 80,000 times. And the result is uh, pure analog engineering with science. Thank you. Большую презентацию новой акустики Dynaudio Эльза Сплазина проведет event manager Dynaudio Roland Pop. But with amplifiers and electronics, you see this and you know you couldn't do that. With loudspeakers, many people think you just buy the best woofer, the best tweeter, you make a nice cabinet and you have a good speaker. But in fact, of course, it's, it's much more. And again, it's, it's really in the details. An audio is uh, a loudspeaker specialist from Denmark. A loudspeaker specialist means since 35 years, we improve on making a loudspeaker better and better and better. But there's one big difference um, to an audio and many other loudspeakers you can see. Because for many people, this is a loudspeaker. This is the heart that makes the sound. And an audio is not buying woofers and tweeters and other components and just making a speaker box. An audio is designing and developing and manufacturing the heart of the loudspeaker. And for our speaker engineers, even this is not the thing that makes the sound. And even this small detail, it, an audio does it, does it different uh, than many other. Because Stephen mentioned uh, with name, there were materials he wanted to have but they were not existing. And an audio had a similar thing. We wanted a voice coil that is extremely light uh, and we made an aluminium coil out of, out of uh, the voice coil out of aluminium on a Kapton former. So this is very unique, but it makes the woofer much, much lighter. Uh, why is not everyone doing it? Because many others just buy the whole woofer and we are really developing and manufacturing the small details inside the woofer. So while, of course, this is a loudspeaker, the, the way to good sound for our engineers already starts at this detail. But this is only one difference, because this is our flagship speaker, and of course you can expect more than just having the best technology inside. This loudspeaker also gets one step further. The question is, if you have perfected this one, and this one, and the woofers and the Peter, you made everything you can, on the technology side, on the material side, to make the best possible loudspeaker. What is the next step? The next step is to make the loudspeaker improve in the room where you listen to. Because if you listen to an audio system and to a loudspeaker, what you hear is not the studio recorded or the stage recorded. What you hear, even in the best spot, is a mix, mishmash of the recorded stage and your own listening room. You get direct sound and you get a lot of reflected sound. Because a loudspeaker is not like a torchlight, it's not going straight. A loudspeaker is going like this. But this speaker is different. This loudspeaker has DDC technologies. For example, you can see that there are two tweeters and two mid-range. This is not because two tweeters is better than one tweeter, but there's a certain phase and frequency relationship and a distinct distance between the tweeters 
that influence the sound radiation of the tweeters. This is repeated again with the mid-range. So this loudspeaker really goes very straight to your listening place. And if you're at your listening position, you have 75% less reflection from the ceiling and from the floor. And the result is you can really hear between the two speakers the recorded stage, the recorded studio, the recorded room. Because at one point in an audio and high-end system, it's not more bass and more mid and more treble, it's getting closer to the recording. So if you to listen to this loudspeaker here or at any other uh, opportunity in the future, really try to listen. Summarizes, this is a loudspeaker that is not only our best technology inside, but it even sounds better in most listening rooms. Because all this is only a promise until now, I think we will play some music. Okay, Spasiba. Thanks for sticking around. You know, the only thing that we have to do now is to prove everything that we say. And it's really difficult for us to prove it in this environment because you're not at home, you're not in your favorite room, or sat in your favorite chair. You're sat next to somebody who you probably don't know. And we know that it's the same for every other exhibitor here. But if you hear anything here today, that gives you a glimpse of what statement coupled with these excellent loudspeakers is capable of and if you can imagine having it in a controlled environment. So before I start to play, I'm going to play three pieces, different pieces of music and I'm going to use streamed technology for that. But just before we do that, Steve's going to show you a quick experiment just to explain something to you. I wanted to show you this experiment. This experiment was first done in Russia in 1835. Heinrich Lenz looked at the work Faraday did and it was all about magnets and metal. This is aluminium. Heinrich Lenz said that the current in here will produce a magnetic field to oppose this magnetic field. It should do this very slowly. There we go. So we see it very slow and this teaches the engineers how to treat signals going past metal and what. Only a fa 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 wants to to count count her steps. Eighty strides and she stops to abide by the law that she herself has set. That eighteen steps is one complete set, and before the next nine, right and nine left. So, if anybody's got any questions they'd like to ask, you please come and see myself, or come and see Steve, or talk to the guys from ALEF, a distribution company or actually the guy from Dain Audio. So thanks very much indeed for your time, thank you. Спасибо, что когда-то... Мы можем задать задать вопросы всем присутствующим здесь лично, из компании Name, Dain Audio, Alif, так что давайте мы готовы ответить на...